I have a simple environment set up here and a simple player controller. I can move around, look around, jump around, and that's about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a navigation mesh to this scene, and then I'm gonna put enemies on here that will chase the player around. So let's start by adding the nav mesh. Go to the root node and add a navigation region 3D and drag the environment meshes, uh, make them a child of that navigation region 3D. Click the navigation region, go to nav mesh, new navigation mesh, and click bake nav mesh up here. You should be able to see the nav mesh now, and I'm gonna show you a few things that you could change or maybe you'd want to adjust on here. First, uh, if you click the nav mesh property, go to agents, let's say I made this height five and then I clicked bake nav mesh again. You can see here that uh, this platform now, because it's less than five meters off of the ground, that's removed here from the nav mesh. So that's something important to keep in mind if you've got doors or overhanging ledges or something around your environment. 1.5 works totally fine for me, so I'm just gonna keep it like that. The other adjustment I'm gonna make is I don't want agents to be able to climb up you know, halfway uh, up this ramp. I want them to have to enter closer to the bottom. So I'm going to change max climb to 0 0.05. Uh, but then when I bake it, the nav mesh kind of breaks a little bit. And that's because uh, the cells here, I've got this max climb height set to something that is lower than the height of a cell. So I need to change that height to be the same thing. And if I bake it again, it looks perfectly fine. So this looks good. I'll save this scene and I'm gonna make the enemy now. So I'm gonna make the enemy a character body 3D. Call it enemy, give it a mesh instance 3D and a collision shape 3D. For the mesh instance, I'll make it a capsule mesh and I'm gonna give it a standard material 3D and change the albedo to a nice red color. There we go. Collision shape, I'm going to select it as a capsule shape and I'm going to transform set the Y to 1 just so that the origin is at the bottom of the capsule uh, oh and actually I'm going to add one more node I'm going to add this navigation agent 3D node and this is what's going to be used for the pathfinding so I'll save that now and then I'm going to attach a script to the enemy and I'm not going to use this template I'm going to use just an empty script so first thing I'm gonna need is a reference to the nav agent. So add on ready var nav agent equals navigation agent 3D. And we're gonna need a function that can be called uh, on our enemy in order to set the target location, which in this case will be the player's location. Uh, I'm gonna call it func uh, update target location, target location. And all we have to do in this function is navagent.set target location, target location. And we are gonna call this and have this target set uh, in the world scene. But for now, let's just assume that it's being set properly uh, and let's actually calculate the movement, which we will do in the physics process function. So physics process. A uh, little bit of vector math here, but it's just a couple lines. It's pretty easy. Let's start by getting the current location of the enemy. Current location equals global transform dot origin. And then we want to get the next uh, desired location in the path that is currently being calculated by the navigation agent 3D. And we can get that by typing uh, next location equals nav agent dot get next location pretty nice and then the little bit of vector math here is uh, just calculating the velocity between the current location and the next location or you know getting the velocity from that so we'll start by doing new velocity equals next location minus current location and we'll normalize that vector and we'll multiply it by a speed variable, which I'll put up here. Uh, and I'll just set it equal to three. So this is our desired velocity in order to get to the next uh, point in the path. Uh, for right now, 
I'm just gonna set it, uh, set the velocity to this value, and I'm gonna change this later, uh, and I'll explain why, but this is just the easiest way to do it. And then all we have to do is call move and slide, and this is all of the movement code that we need. All we need to do now is to set this update, to set this target location with this function. So we're gonna do that in the world scene, and we're gonna do that by adding the enemy to a group. So this enemy uh, root node here, go to groups, and I'll add it to the group enemies. And then let's attach a script to the world scene over here. Uh, so we're gonna be setting the player location for all these enemies. So we're gonna need a reference to the player so we can get that location. So at onready bar player equals uh, player. And uh, we'll use, we'll set the target location in the physics process as well. So func physics process. So we wanna get all of the enemies in our scene tree. So get tree, call group, enemies. Uh, and then, so right here, we'll put the function name. And right here, we will pass in the argument, which is gonna be the player's location. So player.globaltransform.origin. And that function name is update target location. So I'll put that there. And then let's drop an enemy in here to test it out. So let's take the enemy scene here. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's take a look. Okay, and it's moving. So you'll see it's kind of floating above the ground a little bit, and that's just because the navigation mesh uh, sits above the ground a little bit. Uh, we could fix that by going to this navigation agent 3D pathfinding panel, and we'll add a little bit of an agent height offset. I'm just gonna set it to 0.1. And there we go, it's, it's on the ground now. Uh, now one problem with doing this method is that uh, it's gonna catch on corners a little bit like this. Sometimes it'll even just get stuck completely. And the simplest way to solve this is to just have a little bit of uh, momentum in the enemy's movement. So uh, all we have to do here is velocity equals velocity dot move toward new velocity. And I found a weight of 0.25 is pretty good. So let's try this now and see if it gets cut on those corners. All right, you can see it's going around those corners a lot more smoothly. All right, uh, and then just to show uh, something that you could do with this, for example, uh, I'm gonna go to the navigation agent node and I'm gonna use this target reached signal, attach it to the enemy. So now here, uh, if the player were to be in range, you could set up like an attack from here, but I'm just gonna print in range here and you can set this range by going to the pathfinding panel uh, target desired distance let's set it to two meters and then if you look at the output log when this enemy gets close enough it says in range okay so uh, that's all pretty simple one last thing i wanted to show you is uh, if i create multiple enemies here so I'll copy some of these this current system, uh, it works, but they all group together pretty closely like this, which doesn't look very good. Uh, it would be nice if they would keep away from each other just slightly, at least. And uh, Godot 4's navigation system does have an easy solution for this. And all you have to do is uh, go to Navigation Agent 3D, go to the Avoidance panel here, and we'll enable Avoidance and we need to also use this velocity computed signal. And this is how we use it. Uh, so here, after we uh, calculate the new velocity, we're actually gonna do nav agent dot set velocity, new velocity, and we'll take those lines, put them down here and change this to safe velocity. And all this does is uh, this function here is saying, okay, I have this new velocity that I want this enemy to move towards, uh, but I also want it to avoid um, other obstacles or navigation agents. So take this new velocity and calculate an adjusted velocity from the other agents and obstacles in the nav mesh. And then this signal goes off with a safe velocity, which is just that new velocity adjusted a little bit. So we just use 
the same exact things here. We just put in safe velocity. And if I hit play, you will see that they stay away from each other a little bit and it looks a lot nicer. All right, that is all I had to show you guys. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of this.